10 warning signs your content absolutely sucks. Hey guys, my name's Jade and welcome back to my channel. We're about to dive right in. I'm actually not gonna do a long intro. You guys are probably sick of this. Every other marketer on YouTube is probably gonna go like, yeah, 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 buy my course. No, it's not that video. I wanna give you guys the absolute truth. If you're new to this channel, I basically consult lots of companies on how to grow their social media to increase their sales. And throughout that process, I've learned and saw so many things wrong that could actually just be small little things that you haven't thought of that could just change the trajectory of your brand. And I made a list, we're gonna dive right into the first one. No bullshit, I hope you guys like this video. The way this video is gonna work is I have a checklist of 10 things. I know you guys are very busy people, but I recommend staying to the very end of this video because I'm actually gonna give away a 10 point checklist to optimize your content. You don't wanna miss anything, so we're about to dive right in. Okay guys, we're gonna do this together. So open up your phone, go on your social media, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and let's do this. So first thing you might be doing wrong is if you don't have social proof. But here's the thing, when you hear me talking about social proof, the media thought is, oh, do I have enough followers for people to care to follow? That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying social proof needs to be a number on a screen. However, yes, it does help, but a lot of you guys are missing a bigger thing, which is the whole idea of social proof, right? Is to build trust with your customer, to build trust with you guys. But the thing is, listen, you can also do it in other ways. Like, for example, posting reviews, posting testimonials, screenshots of just happy people loving your content. Those are way, great ways you can use a social proof even if you don't have a large following. For the longest time on my account, I didn't have tens of thousands of followers yet. Actually, a year ago, before I did all this marketing consulting companies, I only had a thousand followers. I did experience like a, a 700% increase in my brand over the past year, but that was because I was screenshotting your guys' testimonials. I like to share what you guys think about my content. Feedback is important because other people can see it and be like, oh shit, I really trust this person because Sally thinks so too. As humans, we're honestly such big bandwagoners, like whatever's cool, we just kind of pivot. So if you can do that with your brand in a way that's subtle, not just showing your followers, but maybe just showing, hey, these are 20 people that love my content. These are screenshots of happy comments from my last post. That is a huge indication that you're using social proof to build trust. Okay, cool. So the second problem is if you don't bring value to the table first. This is all about reciprocity. Whoa. I'm actually currently back in LA. I was on a Europe tour meeting you guys, consulting and doing a little business trip. So it's kind of nice to be back. I'm on this like rooftop thing, but like I don't think I'm supposed to be here. So if there's any time throughout this video that I get kicked out, we'll have to see. But anyways, step two, if you don't bring value to the table first. I think a lot of times as brands, we always, always, always want our followers to just like do something for us, right? Like, hey, share this post. Hey, comment, go buy this product, swipe up. But we forget we have to do the first initiation of the relationship. You guys love my analogy of dating. Like literally social media is just dating online. Like I'm I'm not joking. Like if you're good at Tinder, you're good at Instagram. Actually, don't quote me on that. That might be, that might not be a good analogy. What I'm trying to say is in like a relationship, when you want to show interest to in someone, you don't just wait for them to come to you, right? Maybe you show a little flirting, right? You, you text them something, you um, send them a DM. Same with here, you wanna flirt with your audience. So if you're not flirting with your audience, if you're not DMing them, if you're not saying, hey, thanks so much for watching, if you're not literally going one-on-one -on -one and telling your customers or followers. I know on this page, we might be on different points of our career. Maybe you're an influencer or maybe you own a company, but the idea is the same. Like whatever you do on social media, you need to build that, hey, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. The best example of this is when you do a free gift. If you can give your followers something, like, hey, thanks so much for being here, here's a contest. That's the best way for me to just show thankfulness and gratefulness for your account. Third thing you're probably messing up on is not being a likable brand. I know, that sounds really weird. You're like, hey Jade, uh, what does that mean? I, I, I like my brand, why can't people like mine? I'm not saying likability is like, you love the product. The product I'm sure you guys are extremely proud of is solid. Um, what I'm talking about is if your brand presence online isn't likable. The way you can be likable is actually if you show that hey, there's bigger purpose to it. As humans, psychologically, we just like doing something that benefits others. Like at, deep down, core in my like really tense, stressed, heart i just i just want to help everyone right like I, I love business i love sales and marketing but at the end of the day like i just want to give if you can give people the idea that your account is there's bigger meaning for example if you have charity work right a lot of brands these days donate half their proceeds to a charity they believe in the keyword is believe in 
what I see done wrong, a lot, a lot of you guys are doing wrong, is just thinking that it's enough to have good content marketing and a beautiful layout, right? There needs to be a bigger why. You need to have an ethos to your brand. Why is the purpose? You know, why are you creating a product? Um, and that's the biggest thing. So make sure you guys spend time on your about me page. If you have a website, just make sure you spend a lot of time of your brand story. You need to have a bigger picture. Fourth thing is if you don't have a squad name. Now, I'm not saying you have to call everyone the Dharma Nation. You guys know on this channel, you guys are my loves, and I call you the Dharma Nation because my last name is Dharma Wangsa, and it seems to work that way. Um, but a lot of you guys are messing up because there's huge opportunity when you call your followers a name because it gets community. It gets people like, I want to become part of the squad. The best example is when brands or accounts have ambassador programs or when YouTubers call their YouTube squad a family name, right? It's important to build a tribe because that's how you build loyalty. Fifth thing you're probably messing up on is way too many offers. What, what I'm saying is on every single Instagram post or YouTube video or just everything, you know that YouTuber that always says, hey guys, make sure you like this video, subscribe, comment, like the notification box before the video even started. Make sure you have a single call to action. I'm not joking. Make it simple, make it straight to the point. If you have an Instagram post, make sure you say, hey, swipe up, that's it. Keep it simple. People are confused as fuck. I'm not joking. One of the brands I was working with, I know it's under disclosure, I can't say the name, but they had like the sales page and there was like 40 million comments call to actions it was like buy this product oh by the way sign up for an email by the way do this do that and when it's a cold lead when it's someone who doesn't know you again back to the dating analogy you're not gonna marry someone on the first date <laughs> I don't know does any anyone I'm still learning <laughs> I don't know about you but you probably want to go on multiple dates before you say hey I love you let's do this forever right um, so actually why am I doing dating analogies I'm like literally saying it's important to be simple okay Think about the most important offer. A big question I like to ask myself is what is the one goal I want to achieve? Whew, you guys, we are halfway through this video. Oh, I'm so, I hope you guys are enjoying it. I really love making these videos because I feel like a lot of us are on this journey. I want to say thank you for watching so far. Actually, I was just kind of editing some of the content with my Europe meetups and it might blows my mind that I have this community online. I actually, like a lot of the stuff I'm saying is the stuff I use for my own account and I do want to just share everything I know and everything I learn. So if you're so far enjoying it and you want to follow my journey, uh, make sure you like this video and hit the subscribe button. We do a lot of content about social media growth, personal branding, all that jazz. And I'd love to have you here for forever. Maybe we could get married, like in a in a social media way, like not not action. But anyways, back to the video. Okay, six. You try to solve too many problems at once. What I'm trying to say is, if you're making content that's valuable, right? Maybe you're making an Instagram post with a selfie and a long caption. But it's too long, okay? I know I tell you guys to write your hearts out, write paragraphs, that's great. But there's a certain stage where you wanna make it simple because when you try to solve too many problems at once, you confuse your audience, you confuse the people. What's the ideal goal? So you just wanna solve one problem and offer one product. That is it. For example, if maybe you're a fitness influencer and the problem is losing weight, you have one solution to it and you have, hey, this is the one offer, which is subscribe to my YouTube. The seventh mistake is you don't format your content. This is super simple. I'll actually link below a video on how to format your captions right. I'm telling you, going back to kind of these past three steps, which is kind of the main theme, is keep it simple, keep it easy to read. I've seen so many Instagrammers literally have like this block of text. That is okay. I, I'm not saying don't write a lot. What I'm saying is chunk it down. Check out my Instagram, guys. Like, I make sure I put value out there that's long and thorough, but I really break it down with these bullets. Eighth mistake is being too similar to your competitor. Have you ever been on Instagram, you scroll through your explore page, and there's only 40 comedians, uh, Instagram comedians, that do the same skit. I low-key see Lele Pons, actually, she literally low-key lives in this complex, but I've just seen so many Instagram comedians do the same skit over and over again, and it's just getting old. Similar to your account, similar to any other people in your industry, do some research on supply and demand. See what's out there. I think a lot of the times, yes, you can copy and get inspired, but it's important to add your own voice. So I think that the best thing you can do is just ask yourself, what's the difference between me and competitor A? Remember that, repeat it to yourself every day. It'll help you create more innovative ideas and creative content. If you're curious, another example of this situation actually on my channel is if you're watching this, maybe you've seen so many people like this face 
teach Instagram or teach YouTube. And it's, it's you're not getting the results you're wanting. See, the difference on my channel that I try to separate myself is I don't want... But I don't want bullshit, you know, like I just want to give you guys the truth I don't really believe in showing the la the fake influencer lifestyle All I do for you guys is show you the tools and process that I've learned and succeeded from on YouTube So, you know, like think about ways you can actually maybe change your product and maybe just the way you message yourself So that's a little secret that I use on my channel. All right guys, we have two more if you're so far right here watching this Yo, congratulations. You, you, you're probably about to make a million dollars, Loki. This check, I'm not joking, but this checklist took a long time to just figure out. And I've seen it help a lot of people. So we're gonna dive to the ninth thing. These last two are the ones I wanted to save actually towards the end of this video. A lot of you guys overstep or have a mistake, which is not having urgency in your content. Okay, this is the thing. Yes, you should be consistent, but it's okay to not be consistent. There's something mysterious and sexy when you don't post or when you kind of have a pattern that's unpredictable. When you're unpredictable, the audience is curious and wants to know what's next, right? For example, if you're someone who posts a schedule every day, perfect. But there comes a time where maybe you need to stop posting for a week or maybe there comes a time where you need to pivot and do something a little different. I mean, let's take Jake Paul, for example. He has so many countless scandals. Everyone has a different opinion on him, but that's what makes him interesting. There's something polarizing about being urgent, being weird, being inconsistent. People can't predict you. People can't say what he's gonna do next, which is why people follow him. So similar to your brands, maybe, maybe if you feel like it, you don't have to post every single day. So I kid you not guys, number nine is probably, probably one of the most important ones. It's a little tricky, but I'm here with you. Let me know if you have a question and I'll get back to you. Okay, the 10th thing is if you don't have a clear voice. So here's the thing. What I mean by clear voice is one thing, which is don't pivot away from your ethos, your why, your purpose. A lot of brands and personalities really just mess up because they start losing their identity. I've seen many scandals. When you start losing who you are, what your purpose is, what you bring to this planet, it gets really easy to start saying things that might offend people. Audiences might say, who is this? Here's the thing, you guys. Reputation is everything, okay? So what I'm trying to tell you guys, maybe a lot of these points are confusing. It's a lot. But focus on one thing, which is don't ever feather away from your purpose. If you start losing who you are as a brand, your audience also will be confused, right? So an example of this is if you start chasing numbers and bullshit KPIs. A KPI, by the way, is a key performance index. It's what a lot of brands use to measure success. Anyways, say you chase a number like a million followers on Instagram and that's all you want and you'll do anything to get there. But maybe it, the cost of it is you have to do some really whack things, like really bullshit things to the community, really horrible things to say on the internet, and at the end of the day, it will ruin your reputation. So what, you get a million followers, but you yourself don't accomplish your purpose. So my biggest thing is have one single voice. A voice of, hey, this is my mission. You know, I think you guys should spend more time on your account saying, what do I really want to achieve out of my account? And I feel like once you focus on that, all these other 10 checklists will come together. What I want you guys to do is check the link below. What's gonna happen is there's actually a checklist I made for y'all to kind of run through every single post. So before you do something, before you reach a campaign, you kind of go through this checklist and say, hey, am I moving forward in my reputation? Do I, I, am I fucking up? Well, it's free. A lot of these other marketers are gonna charge you probably a grand for a shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. So I've been doing a thing where I've been shouting out you guys, whoever comments on my past video. Uh, today, if you want to be the next comment winner on my next video, just comment below actually a question you have. Um, what your thoughts are and I'll feature you next time but the key is you guys if you're someone who maybe is like hey Jay this is super cool I want to apply this to my brand but I don't have enough time I actually do a lot of marketing strategy and I'm opening a few more clients for the month of September and October I'm an influencer who helps brands generate millions and millions of impressions if you're out there and you would like more help I actually have my email below you can contact me for more but if that's not you and you're just here for a good time that's totally cool I love you so much I literally don't want anything from you guys but to give you value and help you out as much as possible so leave me a question and I'll get back to you soon but I hope you guys like this video and make sure you turn on post notifications uh, if you want to see my next content yeah cool cool no seriously guys I'm super excited for the next product launches my app is very well on its way coming out we just launched its version 1.0 to our beta group and so yeah 
super excited. Uh, thank you so much, by the way. If you're someone who really was caring about my mental health and my last video when I was talking about like my shitting problems, uh, thank you so much. I'm doing a lot better. Ever since I landed in LA from Europe, my stomach has been actually functioning. So thank you so for all the prayers, thank you for all the blessings, and thank you for just caring. Like, you guys are fucking dope. Anyways, Germination, Nation, I actually have a meeting to run to. I love you so, so much. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Mwah. <laughs>